welcome to b to play impressions for for the king for the king is a game available on pc switch xbox one playstation 4 it's a turn-based uh, roguelike rpg that can be played in a co-op uh, mode i'm gonna jump quickly into settings and show you exactly you know the settings i'm playing it on i'm playing it on very high my specs for my system will be available in the description for you to see if you want to know i had no problems running this game no everything runs uh, pretty well so let's uh, let's show you the game itself. So in the game you have uh, several different adventures that are available to you. So there's one for the king, where the name comes from, but there's also other ones available, as well as there's a DLC adventure that you can buy. Now, depending on which one you play, there's going to be different. You know, different quests will be given to you. It also uh, you have a uh, difficulty available to you that, that will change. Let's. Uh, be, it will say if I shoot a journeyman, it changes uh, some of the characteristics that you're gonna have during the adventure, which it adds, uh, you know, make, makes it some things easier for you, remove, the, takes away something from the enemies, and so on, right? And then of course, yeah, I played, uh, I tried it on master. I haven't played it all the way through, but I tried it on master, the highest difficulty, and there's a different game modes you can play, like I said, in co-op if you want to, or you can play it yourself. So let's jump in further. So once you start off uh, the game, you 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 allowed to choose three characters that will be played. So if you are playing in a co-op, each character will be another another player. So it's a, it leaves you kind of ability gives you ability to coordinate with another, other people and play together. There's different uh, classes available. There's, you know, besides the blacksmith, the hunter, the scholar, there's also other classes that you can see. Some of them are locked in, some of them not. Let's get back to the scholar, and I'm just gonna switch back to the female as I had it before. There you go. So let's go in, and it's actual game, and you're gonna see it. Usually, you can see the interesting. It got an interesting visual style, which I kind of actually liked. I didn't have any problems with that. Uh, to me, it was, um, you know, I was fine with it. As you can see, the game is running at 30 FPS. It does not go above uh, 30. Sadly. But then again, I don't see a really a reason for a turn-based game to run on 60 that much either. And, you know, we can you can live with this. So here we are. Each time we, we you know we got the three heroes they're inside the town. Each time we start off with an adventure. Well, we start off uh, the hero is uh, for the hero. There's a role that uh, allows uh, the hero to. Well, it determines how many moves a hero can make, and it also determines if there's going to be any random encounters as, as the hero progresses. So let's say if I want to go ahead and fight this pixie, I'm just going to go ahead and progress here. With my hero, walk all the way here. Now if I look at the pixie, it tells me in the red areas who else will participate in the fight. So anybody on the red uh, hexagons uh, will be participating. Here's the thing though, so let's say if I'm my, I need my other heroes to be there because I actually move one, one, all of them one by one and they don't come as a party, right? Number one. Number two, if there's any other enemies, they will join up uh, against me. Now, I got. Now, I don't want to move any further. Actually, I can go all the way to the wood, wood smoke, but I don't want to move any further. Let's do the fight first, okay. So I'm just going to stay here. It gives me more H HP. And I'm just going to move the hunter further along because I know that if I'm going here, that will count. Actually, I can move the hunter all the way here. And let's do that. Uh, see, there was a bit of a random encounter that allows me to move even further if I wanted to. Yeah, why not? And now we're just gonna move the last uh, of our heroes, the scholar. As you can see, new enemies pop up randomly, right? And you can have also random encounters as you move along. And we're gonna attack the pixie now. So, now I can just go ahead fight, retreat, there's also ability to bypass, the, this one doesn't have it because I guess the way the movement works for me, I don't. I cannot go further, but if you're gonna try to walk through the enemy, then you also have a sneak roll. Here I can go ahead fight, I can try to ambush or I can retreat, and uh, if I try to ambush there's gonna be a roll which will determine if I'm successful, in this case I'm successful, that means I'm gonna get the chance to attack the pixie first. Now the pixie has uh, magical defense, but um, 
I guess I have no choice but try to. And they go. Visage attack, I have a bit of a roll also, which determines how successful my attack would be. And now we're just gonna head and attack more. Now, if I want to improve my rolls, I can use something called focus here. I have four focus on this guy, three on, the, on this guy. So, if I go ahead and uh, use my focus here by right clicking, that will guarantee this as a very su a successful roll, right? So I can use, uh, I have four focus, I can use up to you know, three here to do so. But I don't want to waste my focus on this pixie, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, use what I got. Now, depending on the weapons and the, uh, and the class, uh, so on, you're also gonna get uh, more rolls depending on that. So certain weapons will have fewer rolls, so other weapons will have more. There we go, we did, did some damage here at least. But uh, but she's doing some damage to us as well. Hopefully this is gonna be a good roll. Yes, it's a good roll. There we go. And we won. Now we can distribute uh, the, the loot. However, we want to. I can uh, say I can give all the money to this hero, to this hero. Or I can just say let's share it all. all. Right. And now we have a nice day. That means I can still move a bit more further. And we we're gonna choose to do that. Okay, just move back. I will just move back here because there's a reason I want to do that. So I'm gonna end the turn. Now, as you can see, there's a meter progressing which controls the time of day, and it also shows you that if I don't do something to reduce chaos in this area, it's usually how I have to complete some kind of quests. Then the chaos event will happen, which will make the enemies stronger. So you're gonna have a much more difficult time going about things. So. Since my oh, he does not have much of a walk ability. So I don't know. I guess I can uh, I can go ahead and go here then to this town. And in town, I can do a few things. Like there's a services such as in mediation, it restores the focus. In restores a bit of HP and some focus. Healer, which restores HP and cures anything like poisoning and something like that. Blessing, which uh, removes all the curses. All that's available. But you have to pay for that. There's a market where you can buy items and you can buy also weapons and uh, armor and such. And then there's a quest board. You can only get uh, one quest in, in each town. That's that's the maximum. So there you go. I'm gonna say I want to get one of the quest that will reduce chaos and it will give me the quest and tell me. Yeah, by the way, you have to go here and defeat these guys. Okay. So there you go. That's pretty far, that's a pretty long walk, but you know, what can we do? So, I'm just gonna end turn here, and we're just gonna use a hunter. Right, the hunter will go here. Into this town, as we were asking, we're gonna get a few more quests here. That we need to accomplish. Right, and besides this one, I also can click here and ask for a quest again I'm gonna quest to reduce chaos and see what happens okay so they gave me an encounter in this area all right there we go now one of the things that I should you know it's asking me to do is to go ahead and de destroy this so I'll come up here and let's check it out let's see can I do this uh no I should actually use a scholar because I think this color has more of this rolls than anybody else. So I'm just gonna say leave and I'm just gonna end the turn. And I'm gonna send this color in. And we're gonna do an attempt. And we are successful. There we go. So based on that, I'm gonna give myself plus one life. So if one of my guys dies, I'll be able to revive them. Oh, good. So, gonna go ahead and try to fight the this ones now. To do so, I would need to move it much closer. There you go. We have another. That was I think that uh, yes, it's a traveling merchant. It's a random encounter. So I'm just gonna move go ahead and move in closer. And the hunter now. Okay, so for the hunter to fight, this guy needs to be here. 
And we're gonna use a scholar to start off this fight. Hopefully the scholar. Nope, the scholar does not have enough. Come on, come on, come on. The game has a tutorial system actually, you're not seeing it, but uh, once you start off, you're gonna have a tutorial. And the tutorial will... Alright, let's do, let's do an ambush, let's see if we can... Nope, we failed the ambush roll, so we're not gonna be successful with that. So the tutorial will tell you things as you need to know them, so it's not gonna go ahead and before that it just kind of tells you things but then if you don't know something or forgot something there's also encyclopedia available that you can jump into later so it's like a, usually it's, it shows you something like when you click on something it tells you uh, more information that will jump jump you into the encyclopedia which will tell you everything else in the game now I've been um, have a bleeding effect so I need to finish off this very quickly I'm going to choose this guy because he has armor but I have armor piercing ability so let's try this and there you go, I got a critical shot, uh, that's pretty good. But so did the enemy, which is not that good. It's all focusing on my blacksmith. Alright, now I also have ability to do area blasts. So because I'm, I'm low here, let's use my focus and guarantee a perfect hit. There we go. Right, we dodged, good. Now my blacksmith has also ability to do a, a air effect damage, good. And we're gonna give this one the same ability to also do perfect hit, there we go, that's a very good one. All right. Now let's, uh, well, we failed the roll and they both dodged and blocked, so there you go. Uh, fully. Alright, another one down. Almost, 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 come on. Blacksmith, hold on, don't die on us. Because if he dies, well, we have one more life, we can revive him, but uh, generally. If you're dead, you're dead. That's why it's a roguelike RPG. So there you go, we got some money, let's... Uh, well, we're gonna share it out between everybody. And then we have certain things, like uh, let's see, we have a locket here. Uh, let's give it to her, let's her equip it. And the club, I think, he's gonna be better off with the club, right? Yeah. Well, we don't need a second club, we already have one. One is enough. There we go, and we now have one uh, chaos event reduced because we won. So there you go, that's pretty much the gameplay, and from here it's a, it's a kind of a freeform adventure. You just go ahead and uh, travel and do whatever you want. Now, like I, I said that this game, or maybe I didn't, uh, but uh, anyway, this game is pretty much meant to have you replay it and replay it and replay it. Why is it that? Well, because... Uh, on the first playthrough, I don't think you'll be able to survive, especially on the higher difficulty. But then you might be able to score some lore, which counts as the points, which allows you to buy stuff in this lore store, which something to see is locked, but then will they'll get unlocked eventually, which will spice up and improve your next playthrough. Get more characters, get more items, get more encounters, and you get just cosmetics. Right? So all that becomes available to you, and I think that's really great because that means every new playthrough, the more you unlock of the lore, the more different it will be, the more unique it will be, more interesting in such a way it will be. So overall, I would say that's all I have to say about this game. It's a very good game from all this. Now, I can't really say there's anything really cool that happens in this game, so I'm going to say it's an uncool game. It's very enjoyable. I really think that if you're a fan of roguelike games and then you know, for op in open uh, type of adventure worlds type of thing, I think you will like this. Well, thank you for watching. Please um, like this video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, don't like it. And please follow and subscribe.